I would like you gentlemen to tell me about your characters. Uh, my character, Ran Red... Wait, that's the wrong voice. <laughs> Ran, Ran Redmorn. Ran is a uh, fairly tall human. He's, I think I did 5'10". No, 6 feet tall. Oh. Uh, 220 pounds. Pretty pretty good g sized guy. Uh, Middle-aged for human. He's 52. Uh, weathered Caucasian skin. He's got very... Um, very manicured hair. It is long. It's tied back. Uh, and he also has a manicured beard. Also gray. His eyes are brown. And um, he's wearing a uh, a gray plate armor with um, amethyst an amethyst design on the front, uh, which is the symbol of his god. He is a uh, he was a knight in the city guard of Bran Bryn Shendar, uh, which is far northwest in Icewind Dale, uh, along the coast. Um. At one point, the city was under siege, and Ran uh, was dominated by a demon or, or some foe. Uh, and while he was dominated, he was forced to to harm, injure, and kill those he vowed to protect uh, of the royal family, the, the castle. Um, after the, the siege was over and he was, you know, left in a heap after his domination, uh, he was kind of lost and he, he found himself in a, a long forgotten temple to Apenser, um, where he was gifted some abilities and uh, equipment to help him find his way back. Uh, now he devotes his life to killing demons and, and evil creatures. He also has a tome that tell, basically directs him where he needs to go, what he needs to fight, um, which was a gift from his, his god. Uh, down, somewhere down the line, he created a, a group of hunters after a few years of fighting on his own. And... Um, that's where he is today, traveling with this band. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less, and vanquishing foes. And he carries a very nifty, demon-smiting greatsword. Mm -hmm. Kill drinker. Deemed kill drinker. Kill drinker. Yes. <laughs> if you're aware of Klaus, it's sort of his claim okay. to fame. And um, it's also often on his iconography for yep. the whole, um, whatever you call yourselves, the demon scourge i suppose we decided <laughs> uh, so tell us about klaus okay um well klaus had kind of a rough childhood and he turned into a thief um he kind of ended up in a kind of guild of thieves kind of worked together for a while um he still uh knows who they are or how to contact them if he chose to um he ended up kind of make poor choices, more enemies than friends, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> decided uh, he kind of needed to leave where he was um, and leave his guild. Uh, not that they wouldn't take him back at any time, but he's just trying to kind of kind of make things right, go down a different path for a while. Uh, so he kind of just does, you know, he gets his mindset on one thing for a while before he moves on to another. and. Uh, um, yeah, he could, uh, he could go back to his, his thieving ways, uh, he gets the urge, he's always thinking about it, <laughs> but he's trying to avoid doing that. Okay. Hmm. And so what does Klaus look like? Uh, he's 5'4", kind of a human looking cat, uh, white but dirty fur. Dirty. Green eyes. And, and uh, he's I don't... a very good boy. Yes. <laughs> yes, his, his demon blade. Uh, I don't know what he's wearing for equipment, really. But I just have leather right now selected. Right, but yeah. Do you wear a crest from your old clan or guild? No. Probably not. <laughs> doesn't want to be associated. Yeah, I, I, do have random, I do have random equipment, like 
like ball bearings. And yeah, you do. <laughs> I have a thieves kit or a thieves tools. This demon scourge group, uh, your intention is to wipe out demons wherever. So any kind of job posting, any request from persons in the countryside, anywhere in the mm. Sword Coast, when there are demons, the demon scourge is there. And That's this awesome. used to be just <laughs> Ran, and he sort of headed it by himself. It was just a one-man operation. But at some point, when he's begun crossing names off of this list in his book that was provided by a punzer, he got to the point where he was getting up there in age a little bit. He started this a little bit later in life than a lot of adventurers tend to. And he got... Uh, a little more serious about gathering a following of like-minded individuals who are interested in his goals and his ends. There's a great deal of agency, and many of these folks will have other things that they do at the same time. Like if Klaus isn't with you directly, and he doesn't have any reason or need to be killing demons, then he'll do what he needs to do. So beside Klaus and Ran here, I will give you a couple other names. So the first one is a dragonborn gentleman by the name of Zykroff, and this is a dragonborn barbarian. And you met this guy, uh, this was in Waterdeep, one of those big cities, and he's sort of a gloomy, down-on-his-luck type, but on the battlefield you have found him to be an incredible force against the demons. Um, he doesn't seem to have any real qualms with who he works for, so um, he's a sell sword for whomever's paying, but you have found that his allegiance is useful and he is a great ally to you. Thordis Brazic, who is a dwarf, uh, he is a fighter that you met in your travels, again, um, another great ally. He is a tough guy, he's a lot younger than you, and he <laughs> doesn't mind letting you know that. And so when you have fought <laughs> together in the past, Ran, um, Klaus, you've heard them needle back and forth. It's a uh, sort of uh, light-hearted uh, teasing that happens. But you, you suspect that Ran definitely holds it against him. Ran <laughs> doesn't like being called an old man. Um, there is also Beryl Arwana. And this is a half-elf sorcerer. Um, you know Ran when you first started working with her. This was out of... It was uh, one of the ten towns in Icewind Dale. You met Beryl, um, this half-elf. You're not really sure where she's from. She's kind of evasive about that. You do know that she loves animals. Kind of a typical elf thing. Maybe she helped me uh, uh, hone some of my sorcerer abilities definitely uh, she she does a lot of that magic work when you need it I'm one of the few magic users in your coterie um, where did you say we met uh, Thordis Thordis you met in Waterdeep okay Waterdeep as well mm -hmm. just trying to keep notes on this yeah uh, another member is Chandri who is a a human but you think there's more to her she is basically a huge woman, which is a little unusual for a human, <laughs> but you have also on the battlefield seen this particular fighter. Um, you've seen her eyes alight with an unearthly glow when she fights. Um, and so she is a party animal and doesn't like to get too personal, too touchy-feely, but she is definitely one of those uh, members of the Demon Scorch, who you feel is a step above you, but um, still, of course, a uh, revered and useful teammate. Definitely a force to behold on the battlefield. Is she, like, melee-oriented? Or... Yes, she is. Okay. You said fighter? Yes. And she was in Waterdeep as well? This was not Waterdeep. You met her <clears throat> somewhere in the Sword Mountains. It was basically on okay. the battlefield that you met and uh, that's where the alliance was struck. And Divdin Freth is a drow rogue. And Klaus, this is... Uh, you're pretty close with this guy. Um, okay. So he, you don't think that 
he wasn't a member of your previous uh, clan, but he knows of it. Like, he sort of knew you through those venues. But um, you get along pretty well just because of the fact that um, he is, like, unrepentantly evil, and it's almost funny the way he is. Um, so this is a drow who he is cursed by a lawful good god. And just bad luck always follows him, but it's good for a drinking story at the bar, for sure. And you also know a human fighter named Earth, who um, you met in Baldur's Gate. He has helped you out on a few occasions, but he has a an infant son now, and a day job, and he is not around so often but Earth is a valuable part of the team still. He tends to take more of a clerical role, um, worrying about uh, there's not a lot of inventory and economic management that goes along because it's very loose, it's very independent. There's no paychecks exactly. Mm. It's when we complete a job and get payment, whoever's involved gets a cut, basically. Yeah. But um, Earth nowadays handles a lot of the uh, more file-keeping sorts of tasks. Semi-retired. <laughs> Semi. Uh, you, you get the feeling, though, that he just really loves a good scrap. Mm. Like you, he might be getting up in age, but he doesn't want to let it go. Okay. Now, these are a few of the big names. There are some more, like, interns, basically. People you're trying out, people you've met, fought with once or twice. They're kind of loosely part of the Demon Scourge, yeah. but this is, uh, as an overview, a number of the important figures. Uh, to give you some background here about the company. Mm. We are the Scourge, and you should be scared, demons. <laughs> I kind of want to talk like George W. <laughs> <laughs> Do it up if you have to. This campaign, mm. uh, as I intimated before, takes place in the same universe, so you're still on the Sword Coast. Um, so we've introduced Ran. We know who Klaus is. What if we find Gondor? <laughs> <laughs> what if? You won't know who he is, perhaps. Do we know if it's like the same time period or not? I am not going to reveal that. You will learn right. time. Fair enough. <laughs> are you in intending? I don't know. Maybe you don't even want to re reveal this, but are you intending for this to be a, like a reoccurring side campaign kind of thing? It might. Depends on how it goes. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I kind of asked him that. He's like, "Yeah, if you survive." <laughs> <laughs> James and I were kind of talking about that earlier too. We're like, oh god, this might be some uh, <laughs> tough ditties. Well, you put all that effort in the character, it'd be a real shame if something like <laughs> James also was telling me that he might want to play this character again. Yep. I feel Should the same. Have said that. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Our setting picks up. Um, this is in the wake of a serious showdown that <clears throat> the group, the Demon Scourge, had with a <clears throat> high-powered demon. Dude, the music you pick is always so, like, right. Nice. It just feels big. You better feel big. <laughs> <laughs> this happened basically inside of Mount Hote now, which is the volcano that provides Neverwinter with its neverwinteriness. It's always hot. Hmm. Wherein, now. <laughs> um, Ran, you were again heading this showdown, and now Correct. this was not a name that was in the mm. Folio Victa. This was a job that Folio came up, Victa. and um, this task was executed in the defense of Neverwinter, and this was a serious fight, one that you were not exactly prepared for. Um, hmm. Ran you and six other of your allies. Six. You fought this monster and were victorious, and five of you returned. Oh shit! Everybody in the Demon Scorch who could attend was there. Um, Klaus, it's up to you if you were there at the time. 
Um, yes. Okay. Klaus was right by your side in this conflict. Um, was the one who didn't return a named compatriot? Yes. His name was Tenor. Oh, shit. <sighs> Tenorin was a good man. He fought well by your side. Um, you didn't know a whole lot about him because he was very introspective, very much um, a private person, but he was truly a blood brother. Uh, not by blood, but a blood brother forged on the battlefield. Mm. And unfortunately, I... with that loss, um, Ran, uh, you have had this sinking feeling for a long time that has only gotten stronger, um, that uh, you've been doing this for a long time and you need a rest. And somewhere in the back of your mind for about two years, you've been wondering when this rest is going to go on in perpetuity, when you're going to get out of the business. Hmm. It's not something you want to do, but it's something your body is telling you will happen. <laughs> in Rand's mind, he's going he's gonna to rest when he dies. There you go. Ran, you have been traveling from the north of the Sword Coast, and you've been touching base with a few different people here and there, contacts, Ooh. other members of the Demon Scourge, repairing equipment, touching base, but in most cases it was informing your compatriots um, of the loss of one of your company. Mm. And so it's kind of up to you how hard that hits you. The demon scourge is my family. There you go. So you have lost every one. loss hurts. I'm sorry. Every loss hurts. There you go. And you have <laughs> met up with Klaus because he was in the area. Um, he was also heading up this way. You have found yourselves in the heartlands and in the middle of a particularly nasty and rainy evening, you followed the uh, the long road north along the river Deserin, and your destination, which lies ahead of you, is the Barge Right Inn. Klaus and Ran, you are on your horses, you are traveling north up to the Barge Right Inn, and the moon is obscured by clouds right now dark storm clouds and with the edges of some orange lit lanterns you can see the structure um the both of you are more than likely familiar with it Rand, you've been here more than once klaus you've if not heard of the place um mm -hmm. you've probably been here if you've been in the area um so okay. the Barge Right Inn is not merely an inn. It is a fortified paddock. So as you're traveling up the road, you can see uh, you're at the top of a valley and looking over this place. There is one great big structure at the top of this with two spires. One is a little bit off kilter. One is nice and straight. And in the... Uh, rain. You can see, illuminated by lanterns, a number of small houses, um, shops, perhaps, all lit, arrayed around this large structure. And then around them is a fortified wooden wall, which stands probably 12 feet tall. It's like a fortress in miniature. And within, as well as around these walls, are pastures. And in the firelight, as you get closer in these lanterns, you can see all of the livestock, the horns glistening with rain, the tails flicking, the herdsmen walking them here and there. Um, so to the east of this whole fortified structure is a tremendous paddock, and you, you can't even see it all in the night. Though it is a nasty and fell night, um, you are here for rest because this is the site of Tabras. And I'll put that in the chat. Um, and this is a renowned place. 
Um, the whole barge right in itself is truly renowned because this is where people go for shelter. Um, the Deserin Valley can be a place of nastiness where there are plenty of monsters that run amok unchecked. Um, in recent years, there were demons, but um, fewer now. Um, but Thanks Tabra's is a uh, an alehouse of Fest Hall. It is uh, renowned for the not cheap drinks, but affordable drinks given their quality. But you are looking forward now after having ridden mm-hmm. your horses in this gale, this terrible storm for about the entire day. You're ready to get by a fireplace. Rand's horse is named Weston. Weston. And he is a magical horse. Meaning he is a, a summoned horse. Got it. Oh, nice. Yeah. I just thought of that on the spot. <laughs> is that the only horse we have? Oh, I'm sure there's... <laughs> you have Klaus, a horse you're well. riding a steed of your own. Oh, good. Okay. Well, then mine is Easton. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just for some background, he, um, Ran has fine steed, and that's the horse that he always... I think it's a war horse okay. that he always summons. And you can communicate with it telepathically. Telepathically, within one mile, if, it, yep. if it's within a mile. So the horse is just telling you, I want oats, I want oats, I want oats. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good boy. <laughs> But you are thankful for it because the ride keeps you out of the muck that accumulates here. Not to mention yes. the uh, preponderance of feces around here. This is a <laughs> road where the cattle drivers will take their livestock from the farms and down to uh, the coast. Uh, the gates nice. of the barge right here, they are attended by two guards... Um, up on the ramparts, there is a structure built up behind the walls upon which they stand. The walls themselves aren't thick, but there are structures here. The gates are open right now, and you can see that there's a short line of cattle herds trying to drive their livestock in here. So you'll have to wait a minute or two for them to clear out. What, what time of day did you say it is? It is right around 6 p.m. Okay. And this is about mid-fall, so this is in the autumn harvest time, and of course you've got a lot of livestock coming through here because it's just about killing mm. time. So much cooler here compared to Neverwinter, Absolutely. or Mount Hot, hope to know. <laughs> <clears throat> the guards by the gate, you can see that they bear pikes. They're not in any sort of uniform garb. They're wearing piecemeal armor. But as you pass the gates, and you can see that before you is a messy sprawl of market stalls, a lot of them have been packed up and folded up for the rain. Um, And you are also assailed by the stench of wet mud and manure here. You can see that uh, there are two guards uh, with staves that have a crook at the top. And um, they they greet you. One of them waves you over, and mm. and she she hails you in the the din of the rain. You note that the cattle herds before you simply went by, but you're being singled out. You suspect, of course. And she says, "Hail out of the rain, follow the hill up." She says, "Aye." Oh wait. <laughs> All right there. All right then. All righty now. <laughs> and she points you to a an avenue that takes you toward that largest of structures. Uh, this path that you take brings you past uh, what is beginning to be a secondary wall within the walls. This one is not as tall. It looks like it's still being constructed. There are two large posts that mark where the uh, completed thing would be. So you continue through the mud, your horse's hooves sucking through what's got to be 200 feet of deep mud here in the entryway. 
made even <laughs> worse by the rain. Ran, you're familiar with this area. It is called the Rise. There are two streets of the barge right in, one being the Rise, the other being the back. But the Rise here is where the uh, businesses are. Um, the back, so you know, is like residential. This is an area I've frequented. This is where I normally go for rest, or... Uh, when you have the opportunity, the uh, right. uh, privilege when I'm passing through. of visiting yeah. barge, right, indeed. Um, a lot of times you'll be out of the way or it's a bit too far to travel, but it is definitely a boon to visit. Come here to restock, rest, and revitalize. As your horses meet the rise here, uh, this is a muddy, partially uh, cobbled, way there's some gravel thrown down basically but the mud has overtaken it you can see that there are a few figures out in the streets some of them with lanterns but they're hurrying to get to their destination cloaked uh, pulled up tight against the wind you can see that um, as you pass on your left what looks like a general goods store um, it is still open but um, the windows are being shuttered against the storm um, mm. On your right, you can see a uh, what looks like a blacksmith shop of some description. And outside, there is a man who's got uh, a cloak pulled up over his head, hooded. And he's messing with what looks like some sawhorses out in the front of his building. Um, and then to the left, a little bit farther up the hill, um, farther along the rise, is Tabras itself which is a two-storied uh, inn, tavern, and you can basically see through the lit windows, um, all shuttered up still, but the light is peeking out. You can see all the merriment and <laughs> joviality going on in there. Sure looks like they're having fun. That's way too much southern. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's good. Come on, Weston, we're almost there. There is a stable here on the left. Part of the roof extends, and then there's a spot for horses. Um, and there is a stable hand there. He uh, he reaches up for the reins of your horse. He says, we'll take them. One gold for the night. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. All right, buddy, this is the end of line for you. And, um, I stroke his mane. He nickers and uh, telepathically, you can yeah. hear him say. Um, <laughs> he tells you that the the stable hand has a gentle hand. Good to know. Rest up, my friend. So the the boy takes the two horses. Uh, it looks like he, they're being taken around back, where they must have more space. You let me know if he's mistreating you. you? So we were told to to be pulled to the side. They knew where we were going, or. No, um, you expect you've had this treatment before because they didn't recognize you. So if you're not a usual, um, uh, ordinarily in the past you've been given like the layout by mm -hmm. those guards, but you think because of the rain they're just telling you how to get out of the rain. Okay, got you. <laughs> oh, yes, it's all in my fur. I feel like a I feel like a wet cotton ball. You could use a good washing. We're both good. Tabras is a tall building, and there are all sorts of balconies inside and out. Um, it's this charm that is kind of unique to the Deseran Valley. It's not exactly opulent, not exactly shabby. It's somewhere in the middle. Now, it looks like pretty much everybody who owns a cow is here. Um, it is quite packed this evening um in fact coming in the room you're pushing past three or four people who are in the process of either donning or taking off cloaks and boots and things like that in the ground right in front of the door um all of the rugs that have been sit here to sop up the rain <laughs> are quite uh wet so you've got to slog through those as you come in so i take it we're we're kind of a. Uh... Uh, we kind of stand out amongst this crowd. In your armor, yes. 
Ran is wearing his full plate and um, with the mud from the road on it, he is definitely drawing eyes. Klaus, not so much. Maybe being a tabaxi um, is getting you a few looks, um, but your garb is certainly nothing out of the ordinary. Just to know, I do have my... The helmet is like a almost a full face thing with kind of like the token, but mm -hmm. uh, it's off and it's it's attached to my pack. There are seven or eight tables in this main room. There are a few other auxiliary rooms um, off to the side. And there's not a lot of gambling. It's a lot of drinking, eating hearty meals right now, a lot of storytelling as well. And now behind the bar, there is a short, blonde, wisp of a woman. Um, and you know this is Tabra. She is well known. Mm. She's wispy. Just, um, she is dainty. Oh. Put it down. Human? Okay. Yes. She, um, she looks like she's no older than maybe 16 summers, but hmm. when you look in her eyes, you can tell that there's certainly more to her. She aged well. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> And as you approach the bar, um, Tabra is already pouring ale for you. Uh, make that a double, Tabra. Will do. So you've made your way back. I think one of you looks familiar, maybe the two of you. Yeah, uh, yeah I think you've met Klaus before. Hmm. Tabra, pleasure to meet you. Yes, and you. Now uh, a refresher. No vomiting, no fighting. You make a mess, you clean it up, okay? Uh, you know That's it. fair. All right, then. Uh, would you mind, uh, would you mind pouring me milk, please? <laughs> milk? Yes. She you have it? Cow. She turns behind her and, uh, snaps to a, uh, a bald-headed, uh, bartender. He goes into the back. And um, you are presented with, maybe two minutes later, a mug of warm milk. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Whatever it's floats hungry. your boat, buddy. It's hungry out on the road, isn't it? Oh, uh, definitely. I almost had to make this a chocolate. We had a rough week. <laughs> a rough week, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's been we, rough uh... for a lot of people around here. Not a good season. We lost a lost a good friend recently, a brother. That's terrible. Then to him, oh, Tabra herself lifts a Tenerin. tankard. To Tenerin. Gluck, 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 gluck. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> but <sighs> a too. mug of ale has a way of fixing those problems, at least for a while, doesn't it? Here's to hoping. Gentlemen, two gold pieces a night buys you not only the room but the meal as well. Of course. Let's slide it over. And we have ladies as well, if you're mm. in the market for that. 25 gold for our girls. Not feeling quite up to it tonight. Mm -hmm. Are any of them of the cat variety? No. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. Although, we've got some that I'm sure would be interested. Oh, that's alright. Maybe another time. Mm. So what do you have? Uh, leek and leftovers, oysters and mushrooms on toast, spice scrambled eggs. Oh, leftovers for me. Mm -hmm. oh, the hardiest thing you have, darling. Right. That'd be the leftover soup. You are each uh, given, along with your ale, which is uh, dark and oaty drink. <coughs> The soup is pretty heavy undertones of onion with a little bit of chicken and some... Uh, the Deseran Valley has a blue cheese that they're quite fond of, and it seems like some of that has made its way into your soup, and it's delightful. Delightful. The right balance, not too spicy, not too much onion. It's uh, hearty, filling, warm. It's definitely what you needed to get your pep back. 
Most certainly. You can hear a lot of uh, sneezing and coughing as um, the patrons of the bar make their way to uh, get up, get their drinks, get their food, make it back to a table. Um, it is relatively crowded, so you can see what looks like strangers sitting by strangers. Normally about now, uh, Ran would be thumbing through the book and, and refreshing himself, but mm. tonight he's more or less staring off into space. <laughs> Morning and, and thinking about what went down. So how about you, Klaus? Uh, you're just going to get your meal, and uh, what would you like to do? Sounds like Rand's uh, just planning to... Or at least you get that look from him that he's just looking to turn in. Oh yeah, same here. Definitely need to dry off this wet leather. <laughs> Tab you know, because, um, makes my fur. Wet and dirty. Oh, yeah. You can probably smell it from there. <laughs> Used to it by now. The accommodations are quite nice, truly. Um, most inns that you'd encounter here along in the Desert Valley are substantially worse than this. You do have a feather mattress. You are up on the second floor, and um, because of the position that Tabras has, um, you're at the bottom of the hill, but you can see out over the wall for quite a distance. And you can nice. uh, watch as the storm, it abates a little, um, but toward midnight it is still going strong. It's kind of relaxing. In a way. In a way, indeed. <laughs> now, during the night, you can hear downstairs an inordinate bustle. You've grown used to just the boots on the floorboards constantly. There's always somebody coming and going. Um, but you can see that outside, uh, there's somebody with what sounds like a, a brass bell on the north side of the wall, which is over <laughs> where the pastures. Well, that's one hell of a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is obnoxious. And then <coughs> you can hear a lot of boots downstairs. And um, both of you have dark vision, so you have no trouble seeing uh, probably ten or so folks with pikes running up the rise toward that side of town. <sighs> thought we were going to get a break for once. You can hear a few doors on your floor open up, and you can hear footsteps in the corridor. So is this like is this like early morning or in the middle of the night? You guess somewhere around 1 a.m. And are we in the same room? Uh, you have each bought your own rooms. So All right. Separate. Well, Rand's going to start a... Uh getting up to see what's going on mm -hmm. get the armor back on mm. head uh you know, head over to klaus's room and, and knock on the door you can see that he's ready to go as you are you meet at the door i knew you would friend what do you say we go check out what's going on okay down the stairs you can see that not only has it waned there are fewer people down here not so much drinking and uh, revelry happening but uh, everybody's at the window on the far side of the, uh, the room. And um, Tabra herself is there, and they're looking out, and you can hear them muttering. They've all got the packs. They're all going out there. Can you see them? Tabra, what's going on? There's an alarm bell on the north side. Hmm. Of course, my people can handle this, but I think I'm going to take a look with them. Um, we've been hearing that, well, uh, I don't like to spread rumors, but uh, the first sword, the gatekeeper, Chalaska, she was saying something's ill about tonight, and it's got me worried. And all the, all the times I've been here, I don't think I once heard an alarm. And probably haven't seen it rain more than a day. That's for sure. Yeah. For sure. Something about it don't sit right. Well, if you don't mind, I think we'll join you. You up for it, Klaus? Uh, 
I suppose my fur hasn't even completely dried yet. <laughs> That's the spirit. Tabra puts on a pair of, like, oversized boots. It looks like she grabbed whatever was available there. She throws on a fur coat, and um, she's out the door. Rand's going to have his helmet in his hand, but it's not going on yet. Okay. <laughs> Outside, the storm is still going. Uh, when you get to the north side, you follow the rise and between the short alleys of buildings here. Um, I turned on the storm sound again. Yeah, it's getting loud. Oh shit, yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good, good call. Banger. Oh yeah, thunder crackle, baby! Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you can hear that, uh, that brass bell still going, and there is on the northeast side, overlooking the stables. Um, this is on the left side of the barge right in. So that's the inn itself, that great big building at the top of the hill. Um, the guards are gathered to the left of it, slightly down the hill. And um, you go past this very pungent smelling tobacco shop that also does furniture, um, which is weird. <laughs> Roll dogs, it's, it's sort of a iconoclast here. And huh. You, back you, on furniture. You follow Tabra to the wall here, and you can see her talking with seven or eight of these guards have gathered. They're standing there with pikes. And I say guards, but they look more like stable boys who have taken up arms. Um, and uh, on the other side of this wall, you can hear the livestock just... <laughs> you can hear all of the cows. Something is riling them up. Hmm. Now, are we at, like, the top of a wall, or are we just behind a wall? You are just behind it. And okay. up above you, you can see there is a short ladder that leads to a platform. And the men standing up there are pointing to the north, um, where there are a few hills that overlook the entire inn itself. You can okay. also see that overhead, there is a system of ropes and what looks like swings or like harnesses to go from the second story of the barge right out to the stables although it doesn't look particularly safe hmm. there's nobody on it right now <laughs> but the guards are um, pointing past and you can hear Tabra uh, listening to this report and um, they're, the guards are saying that something north of the building uh, of the barge right outside the gates has them worried. And so um, Tabra tells them to just stay alert, basically. Um, torches so what? to each of you. We'll pass them out. Try to keep them out of the rain if you can. Stand close to the wall, but keep an eye out. And she turns to you and she says, I don't know what it is, but my priority is to protect the inn. Well, we're here to help. What, what I'm saying is, unfortunately, the cattle is a little bit outside my concern. What do they see? The cattle are riled up. Uh, our watch hasn't seen anything yet from the walls. You think it's just the weather? I would like to think it's just the weather. It's never just the weather. Hey, Ray, and, uh, maybe you can send your uh, horse out there. Take a look. <laughs> well, if he wants to, that's <laughs> up to him. <laughs> All right. In my head, I'll say, well, Weston, what do you think? You want to go take a look, buddy? Weston is actually out in that pasture. Um, oh, and is he? Okay. The, uh, he tells you that the... Temperature is one of fear. All of these cattle, um, as much as he can intuit, um, they're spooked. They you see anything, buddy? He hasn't seen anything personally, but he knows whatever it is everybody's facing northeast. There's something out there that is making their stomachs churn. Maybe we should go take a look. And Weston tells you it's that smell. 
That smell. Do I know what that means? The demon smell. Oh. Well, Klaus, looks like Rest is going to have to wait. I think we got another job to do. <sighs> it's a demon, isn't it? That's what it looks like. And, All right, uh, well, Tabra, I guess we upon hearing this, um, she has her eyes wide, and she says, I'll go tell the captain of the guard immediately. Well, i only tell them if they're experienced. Demons are a different different breed. They're not like, you know, orcs or ogres. They're they're mighty mean. There might be some way we can get them out of here. Maybe lead some livestock, lure them away. Yeah, I know me demons, and they're not after little. They're not after no livestock. I fear as much. They've got a, a taste for the intellect. They want to go after people that will fear them, not cows. If you can do anything to protect us and all the poor souls trapped in here, if demons are afoot, then you will have our earnest thanks. Well, sweetheart, you're in luck. This is what we do. She, uh, she she chucks you on the shoulder and then goes off in her oversized boots. She runs back. I hand her a ride. business card on her way. <laughs> I would say you you probably have like a challenge coin or something to give. <laughs> no, that's all right. We're not in it for the fame. Well, at least Rand's not. Rand's in it for pure uh, vengeance. <laughs> Good reason to be in anything. He likes to kill him some demons. Well, what do you say, Klaus? You ready to ride? Yeah, let's do it. You can see that up the rise, coming past Tabra, is Weston, and Festin is at his heels. Easton. Easton. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think you. every time they go out on a job, <laughs> everybody uh, interlocks their, uh, their horses. You know, like the, the bro. The bro uh, handshake, interlock the thumbs, and or no, yeah, yeah, interlock the thumbs, like you're gonna arm wrestle in the air, kind of thing. Yeah, pat each other on the side of the shoulder. <laughs> Let's do this. I'd like to think that each time you uh, go on a mission with somebody, you synchronize horses <laughs> instead of synchronizing watches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rand struggles, no, not struggles, but he, you know. He has a little hard time getting on Weston. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking uh, Klaus just like jumps onto the back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Klaus could basically jump over both horses side yeah. by side. Easy. So Klaus, um, I, I think this would be a good time for us to figure out um, a little bit out of character. Um, uh-huh. How long have you known Ran? Like how long have you guys been together? I think that, I guess you could come up with this together, but. Um, I would say not very long, maybe one or two jobs before the, that last big one. Okay, all right. So still sort of getting to know the guy. Well, the thing is, um, Klaus, you're going to know a lot more about Rand than he's going to know about you, because you've heard things from everybody else. Right. Um, but mostly what you hear from uh, the other comrades is just people worried about Rand, because <laughs> as much as uh, your drow comrade likes to needle him about it um he's getting up there in age <laughs> he's well past the time when most adventurers retire age is, is starting to wear him down a bit sorry how old was he again 52 right now and in okay. human years at this time that's he's getting up there you don't see too many adventurers around that or human adventurers around that age yeah, yeah. Well, actually, hell, out here, you don't see too many humans past that age. True, true. <laughs> but he's still towing the line. He's getting it done. As you make your way past the barge right um, to, to get out of here, essentially, um, this wall that surrounds the entire thing, um, there's no gates or access points anywhere on it. Um, you know that once the gates are closed they're closed um, mm. in fact to get in or out um, typically one would pay the guards a few gold coins to use a chairlift system 
to get you in or out. And your uh, your livestock, of course, if applicable, would go to the uh, the pasture outside. Um, I actually had a question. Sure, shoot. About Tabra. So she's giving out orders like that. Is she like like the mayor of this town, so to speak? Or You know that she is a... Uh, what's the word? She's like a, a permanent fixture in the barge, right? So she is... So her, her name holds weight. It yeah. absolutely does. Um, you also know that there's no real organized militia. It's sort of like there's a few guards. Mostly it's employees who are armed and ready should something happen. Um, but you also know that this is this inn is not prepared for any sort of siege. No. Um, a, a pack of goblins could probably clean this place out. What do we what do we know about demons like as far as like weaknesses or I you assume know, we know a fair bit. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Sentence is your uh, bread and butter. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, particularly in the Deseran Valley, demons have chosen this as a favored place because victims are so easy to come by. Um, there are so many small um, villages that are just starting out. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for footholds as far as starting cults goes, as far as easy places to conquer and sacrifice. They're um, clever bastards. Precisely. But, a lot smarter than trolls. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. They are cunning, absolutely. And they often use humans for their plans for their whims as followers as sacrifices etc so you do they also, have any they oh, do have do they have any fire fire resistance or anything yes most demons are from the nine hells which is a plane of fire um, you know that demons are weak to silver which is okay. why you've had your rapiers silvered so are demons considered fiends? Are they one and the same? Yes. Yes, they okay. are. Uh, and, demons are basically one class of fiend. The and, way a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. <laughs> I don't know my shapes very well. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the folio victa, that's the tome? Yes. And is like that, through it? along with the names, does that give, like blurbs about the names or is it just strictly defeat this defeat that defeat that the folio victa ran is it has turned into your personal obsession really um, over the years you have filled it with notes about your exploits about what you have seen observed experienced learned um, okay it is primarily a repository that a punser kept or you suspect that this was not made, did not originally belong to a punser. It was something he obtained and passed along to you. Um, okay. You suspect, um, your growing suspicion is that this was made by a demon for a demon, sort of like mm. um, keeping track of debts or something like that. You also know that the names do occasionally change. Um, mm. So for uh, Klaus's uh, illumination, um, this book that ran, you often see him peeking at it, studying it, uh, writing in it. Um, this has the true names of demons written in Abyssal, and you know that it also changes now and then because Ran will tell you as such. Um, so this does give you some insight, you suspect Ran, into the uh, society if you can call it that, of chaotic evil. Um, because it seems like there are vendettas, there are people change in stature, come and go, not people, but demons. Um, yeah. They're always jockeying for position, and uh, through contracts, uh, conquering other levels of the hells, um, but you get the gist of that in the way that these names change, disappear, reappear. But the ones you cross off remain. They've been crossed off. They are killed by the hand of Ran or one of his compatriots. 
as I said, there are a number of notes in here, um, things that you have learned about these other planes, though you've never been there yourself. <clears throat> um, so, Ran, this is a question for you. Have you ever let anyone else see this? They might be aware of it, but I, it's a question of whether or not you would let them read it, anything in it. No. He, he definitely shares information from it. He, okay. He's forthcoming about what it is and the purpose it, it serves for him and them. Uh, but he does not let it out of his position. Got it. Okay. He'll, I mean, he'll even go as far as show people what's on the page, what he's reading, but he okay. will not hand it over. Got it. To him, this, I mean, this is the gift from his god. Right. This is his. It's meant for him. You have also known this at some times to have strange behaviors. Um, the book itself is always slightly warm, no matter what the weather. And even now, as you uh, wear it either in your pack or on your hip, somewhere accessible, I would assume. Maybe you have a satchel built for it on your plate. Mm. Um, you can feel that it is warmer than ordinary. It's actually quite hot to the touch through the leather satchel. As you're riding down the rise, um, you can see that to your right is another House of Mary next to Tabra's. Um, to the left, um, that man who was out there messing with the sawhorses, he has long since come inside, snuffed the lights on his house. Um, as you're making your way through, you hear one or two other horses around the back. Um, there are guards coming to and from Tabra's right now. Just to note what you had said, there's a um, a small, or not small, but there's an opening on the back of his pack, like where it meets his back, Got it. that he keeps it, slides in and out. Okay. But you, you can feel it's uh, hotter than usual. Oh, he can feel it. Yep. <laughs> right through the plate, baby. <laughs> now, uh, the way down to the gate is through the mud again so you have to make your way back across this as the rain is still falling that thunderstorm still rumbles in the background you can see that one or two um, folks bearing pikes and uh, crooked staves are uh, wading their way to and from they pick another spot a little farther to the south the stalls a um, little closer over there where the mud is less thick but on your horse it doesn't really matter sometime as we're riding as per usual Ran is going to throw his Ion Stone uh, into the air. Got it. So, Klaus, um, you have seen Ran do this before as he enters combat, sort of like a ritual. He has mm -hmm. this little red stone that he pulls from a pocket, and when he throws it, it begins orbiting his head. It just kind of floats there. Um, you've asked him about it before, and he tells you it's something magical. Does an amethyst yeah, have a, a shape? Uh, no, it's depending on the cut. I'm thinking an ameth amethyst-like gem. Okay. <laughs> a little pinkish, purplish violet. Maybe it's gem. not an Ion stone. Maybe it's not a Penser stone. There you go. Maybe it's something like Perfect. that. Perfect. He told you it was something magic. Okay. Hold on, did I just have the sound muted here? Helps me keep up with the youngins. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's another question. Along with, because they're taking up these jobs as they, you know, either finding stuff in the book or traveling from town to town, mm -hmm. do they pick up jobs that end up not being demon related? On occasion. Um, you have gotten to the point where through an interview with whoever is posting the job or some peasant who claims to have seen something, um, mm. you know when it's a demon, when it's not. I like to think I, I can point them to another group to solve our issues. Yeah. The Actually, other, maybe not. The other maybe thing not. is that you have, especially with the assistance of uh, Weston, you have developed the ability to really sense the stink of a demon. Yeah. Weston smells a lot better than mine. Yeah. Klaus, you haven't quite gotten to that point. You, a lot of these guys will talk about being able to smell a demon or sense them. You don't it's really real. get any of that, but you think that it's relatively trustworthy when they do claim that. Okay. It's a real acrid scent, Klaus. Like, mm -hmm. sulfurous. Kind of like that mountain we were on. 
Okay, I'll, I'll keep it in mind. You make your way across the mud back to the front gate, which um, the guards sort of stationed on the structures next to the gates. They look at you come up, and uh, the gates are still closed. You can see one with the um, the pike. He um, he waves to the uh, that woman that had greeted you before. Who, um, she comes out of the rain. She was uh, in a, a little overhang, like a little shed by the wall. She emerges. She says, looking to get out. You want more rain, huh? Couldn't get enough? <laughs> it's our favorite. <laughs> uh, we're going to go take a look, see what's spooking the livestock. Well, unfortunately, that gate doesn't open for anybody after it's closed. No. Mm -mm. Tabra's mighty worried about it. I'm sure she is. She came here and told me, but you can take the rope chair if you want. If there's something out there, I am not opening this door. 